Here are the Cumbot drawings. Oh, maybe this is what the incidents were about. Um, these two are mostly safe for work. Okay, well, I guess I can't. I guess I can't. <laughs> what the f***? So guys, Derek, more plates from our dates.com. Today we're going to be revisiting the Tren archives. This is a pretty hectic one called severe brain damage from Tren abuse, injecting olive oil and peanut butter. I haven't read it yet, but a lot of people were reaching out to me, like not only in the comment section did it look like there were some pretty fucking wild comments that seemed to reinforce that this was worth probably reacting to. But a lot of people like personally reached out to me and were like, you gotta read this one. Hasn't been a good one in a while, so um, here we are. And apparently there is a <laughs> an OK Buddy Retard Award. Shows the OK Buddy Retard Award and grants 100 coins to the community. Uh, what the fuck? I'm deceased award, call an ambulance, I'm laughing too hard. Is this new? Pay F award, to pay respects. And silver award, shows the silver award and <laughs> that's it. Okay, so I don't know, did this guy like win all this, uh, all this, sh all this shit from this story? I don't know, I don't know how it works, so. Anyway, right now there is uh, 23,000 in the spa, apparently, so. The subreddit is building up uh, quite nicely right now. I mean, 19 year old guy who began experimenting with PEDs after winning my first high school powerlifting meet at age 16. Although there were only two other lifters in my weight class at the meet, one of whom was mentally handicapped, winning my first meet made me think I had serious potential to become a professional weight lifter. Um, I decided to become enhanced and try to compete at a regional level the next year. My first cycle was a mild dose of testy, less than 200 milligrams per week if I recall correctly. I ran this for three months. I gained nearly 10 pounds during this three month cycle, but there was a problem. I was still undergoing pre puberty and this protocol either exacerbated or caused some serious gyno. This didn't really bother me much until some girl came up to me and asked how I got such nice tits. Um, so mild dose of testy, less than 200 milligrams a week. Like that's not even a cycle, bro. Like you're on TRT pretty much. Running that for three months. Like I wouldn't, like the, is there a point of going on exogenous test if you're gonna shut yourself down just to run? Like, of course I am the, you know, lowest effective dose, you know, proponent. But, you know, if you're literally replacing endogenous production essentially, now I'm not saying, obviously even if you're at like 150 to 200, like we've seen the graded dose response studies, you can make gains even at like 125 a week or something like that. But it's like for the shutting down your HBTA to use like a marginal amount more than you naturally produce, is it really worth it? You know, less than 200 a week, like I would say no personally. But anyway, I gained nearly 10 pounds during this three month cycle, but there was a problem, still undergoing puberty, got gyno. Girl asked how I got nice tits. I immediately became self-conscious and started taping my nipples or wearing sweatshirts whenever I went out, but I needed a more permanent solution. I knew gyno and steroid users was normally caused by testosterone converting into estrogen, thinking I was some kind of pharmaceutical genius. I immediately went on the Wikipedia pages for all the steroids I could remember by name and found out which ones don't aromatize into estradiol or a synthetic estrogen. So it's like, okay, what I'm wondering is this guy, 19 year old guy, experimenting with PDs after winning first high school power lifting me age 16. So in the past three years, he's been experimenting. So that means like within the last two and a half years or something, he went on Wikipedia to learn about steroids. Like, is that likely going to be the first resource you look to, to figure out what to take? You're not gonna go look up a pharmacology, pharmacokinetic or pharmacodynamic description of the singular compounds to figure out what you should run from Wikipedia. You're gonna be on steroid forums, you're gonna be on YouTube, you're gonna be on shit like that. So how likely is it that this guy's first resource was going to Wikipedia to fucking look up for which compounds are not substrates for aromatase and then choose which one he was gonna use based on that and not defer to any logs of actual people who've used this shit. <laughs> kind of far-fetched to me, but we will see how legitimate the story is as we keep going. So he went on Wikipedia to find out which ones don't aromatize into estradiol or synthetic estrogen. Um, like, I guess hypothetically he could have watched, you know, looked up normal resources and then somehow arrived at this after that but it seems unlikely given all of the information out there on the importance of a test base and or some sort of estrogen backbone in the cycle. And the guy was not on very much. He was on less than 200 a week. Like fuck. After learning that trend won't aromatize into bioidentical estrogen, 
I figured that was the perfect compound for me. Of course, I knew Trend often came with bad side effects, but I didn't care because I was going to become a professional power lifter. Professionals make sacrifices. Trend seemed like the wonder drug to me. Less estrogen and more muscle. I immediately quit taking tests and literally threw the rest of what I had into the trash the same day I ordered Trend. I thought to myself, wow, I'm such a fucking idiot for taking this caveman steroid. That's like the logic of a lot of guys in like the 80s and 90s. They were like, well, maybe not the 90s, but more like the 70s and 80s. They're like, why would we take this caveman steroid developed by decades ago, the most primitive androgen ever, when we could literally take anabolic steroids that are designed to be superior to testosterone. Testosterone, testosterone like on paper is, you know, on paper is like the shittiest steroid of all technically. But, you know, often in practical application, is that the case when it comes to how your body manages it? manages it how you know health processes unfold when you use it obviously not but anyways in my mind test was now a blunt brutish cudgel while trend was a sleek and precise scalpel that could would carve my body to perfection i did some research while i was waiting for my trend to arrive and thankfully decided that my initial plan of 500 trend a with no test base per week was too extreme no shit no shit i decided in my brilliance to do 300 milligrams of trend ace per week with no test base However, I became impatient while I waited for my trend to arrive. And since my hormones were screwed up from abrupt, abruptly quitting tests, my lifts were falling. I grew more and more anxious as I waited. And when I finally got my trend, decided to dose at 400 milligrams per week. So again, like as you guys know, when it comes to trend balone, it's often used at dosages far exceeding what is actually needed for what you were intending to get out of it, which is in most contexts, anti-catabolic, you're getting like basically the recomp effects are what are most sought after with it as well as like it's obviously a potent muscle builder but in general it excels in a um, like a recomp aspect and excels most in the cutting phase in my opinion but at the effective dose compounded on top of your other anabolics or your test base or whatever like literally as little as like 100 milligrams is useful you know like starting at 400 a week is what we thought back in the day was what you had to do we thought you know 300 to 400 300 trenates or 400 in anthate was like, you know, an entry level dose. No, it's a fuckload. I grew and more, grew more and more anxious, decided to start 400 a week. It felt like some sort of army badass or something, deciding to dose higher at a moment's notice before, because I was going all in. I ran the train alone at 400 per week for about four weeks before the side effects started to really set in. The first thing I noticed was that I was becoming more and more insecure about my gyno, even though it had shrunk very slightly. I started to think people were staring at my gyno in the gym, even when I would train with a thick hoodie on and I even told one kid I was going to rip his head off after he looked at me for like six seconds. If anyone was actually looking at me, it was because I was extremely twitchy, especially in the gym. Now, one thing too to note is like, I don't know about you guys, but in high school, like this kid is like barely out of high school here. Like people would get even just naturals I knew, like your, the brain development is not there. Like you have not completely matured at this point at all. People are very irrational and immature. And guys who are, you know, high test fucking jock dudes will just like fly off the handle for no reason. Like I had lots of friends who now are like actually cool, calm and collected guys and very, very logical and rational thinking. But back when we were like 17 years old, they would just like, if a guy looked at them for like more than a few seconds wrong, they'd get like annoyed and like fucking snap or like the same, you know, vice versa. Shit like that would often happen in high school and, you know, even in the gyms and fucking at parties and shit. You know, if you looked at a guy for too long or something, and this is in naturals, you know, not even like trend out fucking 19 year olds on 400 megs of trend ace. So you can imagine what that does to the brain of a 19 year old who is literally like diehard wanting to be like a fucking power lifter for his life is on no estrogen backbone. He has like all of the neuro fucking toxicity occurring while he's on trend con currently while he's like immature as fuck in his brain development. Like all these things compounded is just like the perfect storm for fucking bad outcomes. If anyone was looking at me, it was because I was extremely twitchy. I would sometimes do this thing where I would punch the air like an anime character. I started to think I was actually developing Tourette's. When someone would notice and ask me about it, I would get super pissed and have to calm myself down and tell them I was just celebrating the lift I just hit. I continued to gain weight and strength during this time. I would sometimes think to myself that I was the best lifter in the world despite only benching about 330 pounds and squatting 500. I was about 175 pounds at this time, so these were good numbers, but obviously I was delusional. As the permanent trend blast continued into the third month, my ego continued to inflate to the point where I would sit in class thinking of badass names to call myself like Skull Punisher or Death Muscle. 
I would envision myself being called these names as I stood on the podium after winning a national level powerlifting meet. Lots of other things also went wrong during this time and I believe most of them were related to my terrible steroid protocol to name a few. I became extremely aggressive towards women and grabbed girls by the throat on several occasions. I did worse and yeah, like that's, you know, definitely went wrong, bro. I did worse and worse in school and developed an attendance problem. Previously, I was one of the better students in my classes. I developed a compulsion where I would punch her surfaces to prove myself. I have permanent scarring on my knuckles where I would hit cement pavement or brick walls. I would do this in public. I lost my job at a garden center primarily because I thought it was making me feminine and distract me from my true purpose, powerlifting. My relationship with my parents got worse. You know, that's an expected one. I had mood swings that sometimes involved bouts of racism followed by weird overcorrection periods where I would try to give money to her food to minorities at school. Yes, I know it was weird at the time. <laughs> uh, like that's not good, but that's fucking, it's kind of funny, I guess. Like going out of your, like this guy is like so fucked up on trend. He's just like going to like donate shit just to like feel better about the weird shit he was doing didn't not even realizing this is like like weird to feel better about yourself too i had the typical trend induced lack of sleep which i believe compounded the believe compounded the blatant brain damage from the lack of estrogen and trans neurotoxicity yeah so it was like this information was available while you were doing this so like how could you have gotten to this point is like what i don't get it's not like this was that long ago like typically typically the bad like trend stories are guys who use this shit, you know, like five years ago or something, and it was like, or more, you know, like at minimum, and it's not like there was very much publicly like distributed information. Like you'd have obscure forums, obscure threads on forums. You'd have, you know, uh, you know, stuff going through the grapevine with your friends and shit. But there's, there was no like YouTube talking about this. There was no, you know, uh, big platforms, you know, pushing this and getting lots of views about it. So it's like it's hard to avoid this kind of information now I feel like when you're actually researching it, like you're not gonna find yourself on a Wikipedia steroid profile before you find yourself watching a YouTube video about a guy probably telling you about trans dangers. So like, I don't get this dude. My mental state continued to get worse and worse as I kept using trend, but I kept getting stronger so I stayed on. I also deployed MK677 at some point around the six month mark of trend use at a fairly high dose, which I think made my mental problems worse. So this is kind of interesting because MK677 obviously a ghrelin receptor agonist that has potential implications with, what was that, PTSD related like essentially symptoms. It's like uh, they could basically induce PTSD in rodents through like chronic agonism of the ghrelin receptor, if I recall correctly. And obviously this had some, uh, you know, serious concern with individuals in regards to MK677 use, if that would be, you know, a similar outcome. Um, but on the other side of the spectrum, when you are on progestins that are not potent substrates for aromatase and you lack enough estrogenic activity to provide that neuroprotection that you would normally get from your test base, we see that on nandrolone, for example, using exogenous GH with it actually significantly upregulates how much estrogen is produced and concurrently increases the amount of neuroprotection that happens whilst using a non-sufficient amount of estrogen you know, if you were to not have a test base in there kind of thing. So like the MK on one hand might have definitely fucked up like his stress, you know, and made things a bit worse in that regard. But on the other side of the spectrum also may have provided some neuroprotection that was otherwise lacking from his no test base. But obviously that's not a, that's just, that's like a horrible band-aid to the problem. Obviously I'm just, you know, worth noting on the pharmacology aspect which I think made my mental problems worse. I had taken small breaks from trend use, but they usually only lasted 14 days or so because my badass mindset would cause me to go back on right away. These breaks only destabilized me more when I took them because they were far too short for anything that wasn't already permanently fried in my brain or balls to recover. I thought taking a break was bitching out and professionals didn't bitch out. After nearly a year of using trend during one of the most crucial phases of human development, I had an incident that stopped any further use. He says, incident in quotations. Having forgotten to order more trend, I realized I was going to run out and could be without trend. Like what the, is that, is that it? You're not gonna describe what the incident is? Yeah, I haven't scrolled down because I don't wanna like ruin it yet, but like, that sounds bad, whatever the fuck that was. Like what, you fucking killed the guy? Like what is it? Having forgotten to order more trend, I realized I was going to run out. This could be without, could be without trend for a few weeks. This caused me ridiculous anxiety. I dropped my dose to 300 milligrams per week to try and conserve my supply. My final injection of trend was only around 200 milligrams. And I remember shaking so hard I could barely pin it because I was thought I was going to lose everything I'd worked hard for. Weren't you using trend ace? Like, why are you pinning 200 milligrams at once? That's what I want to know. 
Tren A, yeah. So like, why would your last shot be of 200 milligrams at one time anyways? Yeah, I'm like, I'm like sort of trying to poke holes in the story to see if this is even legitimate or just an elaborately designed, you know, thing. I think there's actually a filter now on here where like some of the, you know, like stories that are potentially sound really, really fake have been like flagged as like probably bullshit. So I think that filter has been implemented by the moderators on the subreddit. So hopefully that this has been previously vetted for legitimacy to some extent. But obviously we go in with, uh, you know, taking it with a grain of salt. So anyways, getting to uh, where the fuck were we I'm trying to um, find my spot here. Uh, OK, took the uh, 200 milligram last shot within two days. My anxiety was so bad. I wasn't leaving the house at all for besides going to the gym. This was during the summer, so I didn't have class. I had already lost my job a few months prior. I wouldn't talk to my parents for more than a few seconds. And I just sat in my room staring at the ceiling for hours. I also became obsessed with the idea of creating some sort of cum bot that would satisfy me sexually and serve as an outlet for physical abuse. I spent hours drawing designs for my cum bot and writing out what it would use, what it would do, and how it would be made and how it would make you cum, etc. I still have these drawings. A few days later, I was losing it completely. <laughs> completely. I was convinced I had ruined my life because I ran out of trend and I kept thinking of how I should kill myself because everything was going to be ruined. I had no hope for the future and it was going to be at least three weeks before I could get more trend. Obviously this was a very neurotic reaction to the situation, but it, to me it was doomsday. One night after an hour or so of sleep, I woke up in a cold sweat with extreme anxiety and in fight or flight mode. I literally thought I was going to die if I didn't pin something. I sat in my bed thinking about killing myself for a while and then decided I was going to man up and sprinted upstairs into my kitchen and looked through the cupboards for oil. I grabbed the olive oil and ran up to my room with the intention of pinning it. I drew up about two milliliters of oil into a syringe but only pinned about half of it into my ass. It gave me an insane sense of relief, which was of course purely psychological. I did something similar the next day, but this time with oil skimmed from the top of a peanut butter jar. In my mind at the time, I truly believed this was helping me. All right, so like, like who am I to say that this guy's psychological state couldn't have been this dismantled that he would do this? It's certainly possible, just highly unlikely. So, you know, like we're reading it and I don't wanna like, you know, talk poorly of this guy. Like if this is actually a situation that happened, that's fucking horrible. But man, like, this is probably not gonna happen if you do Trent, like obviously, but just be aware whatever your previous like baseline psychological state is, like it's going to make that more unstable. So like whatever degree to instability you get is going to be based upon to a large extent, like how unstable you are at baseline to begin with. So obviously an individual like this, I imagine like in general, certain individuals, it's like, you probably shouldn't even take steroids to begin with. And that can, I imagine could be established fairly early on through, you know, genetic analysis, as well as, you know, genetic predispositions and, or just, you know, your temperament and shit like that, that is kind of like, you know, you can kind of decipher it yourself or, you know, objectively have people you trust tell you if you're somebody who is, like if you're a volatile person in general, if you're insecure, shit like that is going to be taken up a level or fucking 10 levels on trend potentially. So not saying this will happen, but you know, Pretty fucking cra crazy if it indeed did. Within a few days, I felt extremely ill and I had to be hospitalized within a few days for a fever of 104. I was diagnosed with sepsis and I had to admit my steroid use to my doctor and my parents. I did not tell them I had been injecting food oils. I just tried to play it off as bad gear. I'm surprised, bro. Like if you're actually willing to talk about using Tren, like, I don't know, maybe he didn't want to make his psychological state seem as unstable as it was, I'm not sure. My parents were devastated and I was extremely suicidal. At the time, I was pretty sure I was going to die in the hospital. I was placed in the ICU at one point and I wanted to die badly. After weeks in the hospital, the antibiotics eventually did their job and my condition improved, but this might have been, might have actually been the low point for my mental state. I ripped my IVs out of my arm as soon as I got the strength and asked for the nurses to kill me multiple times. I was close to being institutionalized and had, talked ex had to talk extensively with a psychiatrist afterward. I felt like a complete failure and I was so ashamed of how I had failed my parents. So. Okay, like this is getting pretty fucking heavy. One thing I can say, like if you're 19, regardless if you're on gear or not, like this guy's goal was to be, you know, like a top power lifter. Get the, especially if you're on, if you're on trend, like sometimes situations that seem like not a bit, that aren't a big deal objectively to a normal person. Like when I say normal person, I mean a person who's not on fucking trend, seem like a huge deal to you. You know, the insecurity that comes along with this kind of compound 
It's not to this extent for the majority of individuals, obviously, but it's like, like try and take a step back and objectively look at your situation. Like this guy, you know, couldn't have his supply of trend and he was not, you know, achieving his goals as a power lifter. And then, you know, leading to all this stuff, some sort of, I guess the incident, I don't know what that was, but you know, like sometimes you just have to be able to objectively look at like what's happening and is it actually as big of a deal as you're playing it up in your head? Because sometimes you can actually take a step back and realize like what is going on is actually like not a big deal and the compound is actually exacerbating things significantly. It can be hard to do that though. Cause it's like you, th you're, the way your brain's working, you think you feel normal. Like you think you're like, this shit isn't affecting me. You know, the trend, like everyone talks about trend, you know, trend rage or trend this, trend that. And it's like, you don't honestly don't notice it really until after the fact when you've reached baseline again, that you're like, wow, like I feel significantly different than I just did on the trend. And you start to make parallels between like, oh, this situation, like with my girlfriend or this situation with my parents, huh? I don't respond the same way I did this time when my parents would like, you know, say, how was your day? And you tell your mom like, fuck off. Like, I don't want to talk or something like that's not normal, you know, but that's the kind of stuff you do on trend at the time. You're just like, God, my mom's so annoying. And in your mind, you rationalize it. And you're just like, my mom's annoying. It's, it's her. It's not me. And then after the fact, you realize you're a dickhead on trend. You know, that's the kind of stuff you have to like really be able to reel your shit in if you're going to use this stuff. After weeks in the hospital, antibiotics eventually did their job. My condition improved, but this might have actually been my low point. Ripped the IVs out. Um, complete failure. Failed my parents. My mental state slowly improved over the course of a few months while my physique and strength wasted away. I was eventually clear-headed enough to realize that I would never be doing steroids again besides maybe TRT since I had probably irrevocably destroyed my natural hormone production. I did have blood tests run at this point. Now, by the way, did he irrevocably destroy his hormone production? I highly doubt it, you know? Like, I highly speculate that if he did a proper post cycle therapy and worked all of the progestins out of his system, keep in mind, these compounds will keep you suppressed for long spans of time. Like, they're suppressive even at like minimal concentrations to the point where you might think, oh, you know, I haven't recovered yet, but you have to wait for it to clear fully be no longer HPTA suppressive and then start recovery process. Like it's not a four week PCT. And you'll be fine after using fucking Trenbolone. You'll probably be fine though. You know, it, it might be a shitty road to recovery and it might be longer than you anticipate based on what some of the, you know, speculative recovery times are on steroid forums where they tell you, oh, two weeks off and then four week PCT and you're fine. Yeah, maybe that's fine for some people, but in majority, like 19 nors and compounds, depending on, you know, the ester and whatever, exposure, duration, blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. It's going to depend on how quickly you recover. And if you, you think you're shut down, you've ruined your testosterone production, you might have just not given it enough time. You know, there are a lot of individuals recently who have been, you know, blasting and cruising for a decade plus using way more trend than this, plus myriads of other compounds, tons of experimental shit, plus other stuff came off, let their HPTA get fully, you know, the burden totally relieved where there's no longer negative feedback use a intelligently designed, you know, post-cycle regimen. And then, you know, it took a while, but they eventually got production back. Pete Rubish, you know, a very prominent uh, poster, one of the, you know, original trend story guys on YouTube. Like he had one of the most like highly viewed videos on trend years ago. And he is like a very successful power lifter who was blasted and cruised for fucking 10 years or something. He's trend multiple times, came off relatively recently and is, uh, you know, has healthy natural production again. Maybe it's not ideal, you know, I'm sure there is, uh, you know, shit that has potentially been permanently uh, occurred to him, but at, at the least, he's like in his 30s, I believe now, and he is, has natural production back, despite having used tons of shit, you know, Vigorous Steve, same deal. Um, he's closer to his 40s, I believe. So for a 19 year old who took like, you know, one year of gear, for you to think that like, oh, I'm fucked now, and like, I have to, you know, well, I don't know what he's gonna say about TRT, I'll like read forward in a sec, but you can probably recover if you're planning on, you know, not taking steroids again, but you think you fucked yourself and you like need to be on TRT or something, you could probably recover naturally. The likelihood that you've permanently fucked yourself, I believe is low. It just takes longer to recover than some people might realize. So eventually clear headed and real to realize I would never be doing steroids again, except maybe TRT since I had probably irrevocably destroyed my natural hormone production. I did have blood tests run at this point. I was essentially out of range for almost every important health marker six months after my hospitalization. My testosterone was 140 nanograms per deciliter and did not seem to improve in the next few months. Um, so obviously, you know, at this point, six months after hospitalization, test this low, 
you know, you would start to look at post cycle therapy intervention. Um, for sure, you know, before that, if you had been off for this long, my brain would miraculously continue to slowly recover, but I undoubtedly would have been much more intelligent and less neurotic had I not abused trend during puberty. Yeah, probably. I eventually got a landscaping. I'm not saying that to like, speak poorly of them. I just like heard my tone while I was saying that. But yeah, like a lot of people don't realize that some of the exposure to these compounds or may have permanent impacts on how your brain develops. So, you know, despite the fact that, you know, maybe you can get away with using gear, you know, 19, 20, 21 years old and shit like that. Like you don't actually know your brain hasn't reached full maturation yet. You don't know what kind of permanent lasting impacts it's going to have on you in an anxiety context, in an irritability context, in a even a intelligence capacity fucking anything aspect. There's data coming out to support the idea that there is potentially some sort of a deleterious outcomes to not waiting until brain maturation in order to use exogenous hormones. Now, how significant is this? Is it negligible to the point that's essentially irrelevant for individuals who are, you know, pursuing some sort of like uh, career in this shit? You know, you have to weigh the pros and cons, obviously, at the end of the day. I'm not saying that you should or you shouldn't or whatever. I'm just saying that I would not be surprised if using, now again, he didn't have a test base, but just using Trent in general for this long of time um, at his age, you know, might have had some significant impact. And at the least, you know, the experience of what happened to him will obviously have a lasting impact on him forever. I eventually got a landscaping job and I'm currently going to college for business. I still lift a few times a week, but I have yet to get my low T addressed and I doubt it is above 200 nanograms per deciliter. I believe a good majority of my mental issues today are related to low T and I've been talking with a doctor about it. In the long run, doing trend for a year straight ruined my life prospects. Had I stayed natural, man, like you're so young, dude. It didn't ruin your life prospects. You have so much time ahead of you. Like you're, what does Gary V say? He says, if you're like fucking 30, he's like, you're a baby. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> I need like Gary Vee to come in and like, like motivate you slash shit on you at the same time for you to say that at 19, you've ruined your life prospects because you did something dumb at like 17, 18. Like that is definitely not the case whatsoever, bro. Um, so anyway, obviously like fucking be optimistic. You have so much time ahead of you. You have not even, you're not even done teenagehood for fuck's sakes. Like just, you know, chill dude. Had I stayed natural, probably would have had a better chance of becoming a competitive lifter, especially if I had competed, tested. I probably wouldn't have failed my parents and myself by doing terribly in school, and I probably would not still have persistent gyno, which hasn't shrunk significantly since the first weeks of trend use. Um, so you, you can get the gyno removed eventually, you know, and there's no reason you could not uh, attenuate it to some extent through, you know, CERM intervention or whatever, you know, when the funds become, you know, available to you down the line. But yeah, like gyno surgery, permanent removal of it, you know, fixes the problem. Failing your parents, you have so much fucking time ahead of you to rectify that. Like, what did you fail in? Not becoming an accomplished power lifter? Like, there's so many other things you can become accomplished in, bro. Like, this is, how many people in the fitness industry have excelled in avenues that aren't related to like their physique even really at all? You know, just because you don't have the genetics to step on a stage and like perform and or look fucking incredible with, you know, some crazy dialed in physique, doesn't mean you can't do something else related to powerlifting or related to something that you have passion about. Like fix your mindset, dude. I get that it seems you're so fucking young. It's not like you're like, you did this and you're like 60 or something. So relax a bit. Um, let's see, can go more into detail about the violence towards women and compulsions I developed in another post. I'll post blood soon in the comments. Edit, here are the cumbot drawings. Oh, maybe this is what the incidents were about. Um, these two are mostly safe for work. Okay, well, I guess I can't. I guess I can't, <laughs> what the fuck? Cumbot 1190, skull case, schism model, sex, brain, data. Gu uh, what is this? Qu quad care, boundless, sexy, neural cum zone, fluid retention module, sex, tens, adaptive sensation remodeling, core clock, pussy module, actual <laughs> sex. <laughs> what the fuck? Or oh, I should have zoomed in to begin with. Orgasm intellect. Orgasm intellect. Orgasm intellect. What the fuck am I looking at? Love heart must beat at constant sixty six beats per minute. <laughs> Perfect sexual tempo. Bliss cardiac pulse <laughs> equals one over one point three RC equals. What are, this is going back to like fucking school math to calculate like how to achieve like perfect sexual fucking orgasm. R equals 11 K was this? I don't know what the symbol is. C equals one NF. 
Um, and obviously, you know, if you're the pussy module um, facilitates the neural cum zone with the core clock correctly and fluid reputation module is intact, actual assex, actual assex will be facilitated at optimal levels via a pulse of 66 beats per minute and the IVF and IVF over here is going to equate to love heart oscillator prime sex. That is the outcome, apparently. Um, all right, well, let us look at the other one. Here we have uh, hip waist ratio arousal mode, A and B, separated into two parts. This is come about 1,191. So this is the next iteration after 1190. A divided by B equals one over six equals 0 0.61803 dot, dot, dot. Maximize semen volume. Sex protocol 2.0, daily sex machine. Blow job, one hour. Anal, two hours. Pussy, two hours. Who would actually want to, like even on trend, like I would never want to have this much sex, fuck. Elimination of the sexual urge. Elimination of the sexual urge. Elimination of the sexual urge. Now, how does that feel? Um, voice seduction amplifier module golden ratio equals sexual bliss. Fucking, I don't know. It's like uh, some weird symbol equals a big long number. Voice output from the CPU via this equals, does not equal, or it somehow relates to seduction output with this complicated number equals enhanced female pussy performance. <laughs> Unbeatable wetness and grip. Pussy miracle. Um, sexual nightmare is over. Um, all right, so I'm going to look at the not safe for work one now and I'll see if it is YouTube friendly. Okay, so I'm looking at it. It's definitely not, it's definitely not YouTube friendly, but I'll read some of it. Um, so we have like the uh, anatomy of a female, which is basically a picture of a chick with her legs spread, with her pussy and butthole just sitting here. Then he has a big erect penis beside it that says <laughs> cock mode right beside it. The sex equation in this one is one divided by, oh, is this a four? And I just like couldn't read a symbol. I guess maybe one divided by four somehow equals negative one plus four or whatever the symbol is. So therefore one equals four minus four squared. This is why sex is perfect, underlined. Remember this with a big erect penis <laughs> with cock mode beside it. Perfect ratios, optimum ejaculation volume. And he has like the height of a woman like factored out here with ratios beside the picture of the butthole and pussy. So, and here is some fucking theme song I made for the cumbot because I thought it was going to be selling them and would need to advertise. All right, I guess let's listen to this. The concept, realistic sex machine. Not bad. I don't, I don't mind it, to be honest. I thought it was gonna be a weird fucking song, but that didn't sound that bad. Here are my pictures, natural, 16 years old. All right, let's see. Is that a fucking shot really at all? Like, let's see, a, you have a better physique shot here. All right, a shadowy shot on the beach where we can almost see what's going on. I can see a bit of an outline of a six pack here, perhaps. Um, and that is uh, about it, you know? He's not that bad, dude, for a 16 year old, like, natty. After six months, trend ace, 400 milligrams at 17 years old. Hey, it looks uh, pretty, pretty good. Obviously, a lot of people are going to be like, oh, this physique for trend, fucking not impressive. Like, why would you take 400 megs of trend for that? It's like, obviously, this guy is like barely fucking even into his lifting. So, yeah, like the trend, it doesn't just morph you into Jay Cutler overnight, obviously. But this guy actually has pretty decent genetics from what I can tell. Uh, I don't know, maybe from the back, not so much, but the, from the front, like this is, as a natural 16 year old, like I can see some mass, like I can see a, some separation of the abs, you know, like this is not the worst baseline I've ever seen for a 16 year old, like that seems pretty fucking good. Not trend level body comp results because I had no test base, I was eating poorly. I did get pretty strong though. I was benching 405 and squatting and deadlifting almost 600 in my high school gym. At 175 to 180, was it worth it? No. Edit, I made a post with a few more details about cum bots, violence towards women, and my racist thoughts. <laughs> Link here, take care guys. All right, I guess this video is over 37 minutes right now, so I am going to make a part two probably. Let's get the comments section here. What the fuck? Yes, I had very intrusive sexual thoughts for months on end, so I saw this as a solution. It's disgusting, but I can, draw, I can post the drawings I made back then later today. 
Hypersexuality is normal for manic behavior in general. I'm schizophrenic. Various PEDs enhance that for me. I've been pretty responsible so far, so I haven't experienced test suppression yet. I can totally believe with Trent having heavy psychoactive effects to have caused this sort of behavior. Skull Punisher after obliterating the handicapped kid in a powerlifting meet. Four flexing emojis. I could barely write that out. I was cringing so hard to remember it. The handicapped kid was actually pretty strong for a handicapped kid. Apprehensive emu laughs crying emoji twice. Injecting peanut butter, most bioavailable way to get your calories found by OP. Jesus Christ, the shit you read on this sub. Like I said, it was a psychological thing. It calmed me down, reminded me of Penny. It was retarded, but it really did soothe me at the time and gave me a sense of control. Did OP have brain damage before steroids? Probably. I was young and uneducated. Brain damage? Not yet. Now, this is where the guy, I guess he didn't have the cumbot designs originally and he added them in. Um, I don't know which parts sound the worst. From Tren and Tess at 16 to cum bots and injecting food oils. This is fucking messed up. I hope you're doing better now, man. I'm doing better. I've talked to a doctor about all the mental issues I was experiencing and I might do a brain scan in the future, but that's more for curiosity. The doctor doesn't seem to think there's anything that can be done if I do have some lasting brain damage. I have a stable job, but I now experience low T symptoms, which are either from the trend itself or the fact that I took it during puberty. Hoping to get this treated soon though. After reading us, there was no doubt in my mind why some, some IFBB pros <laughs> are so extremely stupid. Um, let's see. Hail to the Skull Punisher, a.k.a. Death Muscle. Motherfucking Skull Punisher. Ah, yes. Racism. <laughs> the classic trend side effect. I wouldn't usually do anything physically, but I would think about beating the shit out of black or Asian people constantly, even though I am partially Asian myself. I'd also have to physically cover my mouth to prevent me from saying the N-word in public. This never happens these days, so I believe it was from my hormone abuse. More accurately, it was due to stress caused by my hormone abuse. Excited for Derek to read this to me around the campfire. Holy smokes, what a story. Best to you. Okay, so I guess you guys can uh, read the rest if you're interested. Christ, bro, I'm 15 years old and being interested in all this stuff is scary to say the least. I'm not going to fuck up everything up and blast arms. But I like to be honest with myself. If I continue lifting, the chance I do some sort of cycle in the future is high. Promised myself I'd wait till 20. I don't know the chances I end up abusing, but your switch from 200 tests to about half a gram of trend is making me cautious to say the least. Yeah, so I think this is good that resources exist that have warnings of how to not fuck up, you know, bad side effects, you know, stuff like that. And like in general, I, I would hope the consensus around hormone intervention in a 15 year old, it's like pretty well established that like it's not a good idea at this point. And like back in the day, like we wouldn't know better, you know, there was lots of guys in my high school that used gear. I knew tons of guys who, you know, they use fucking d ball, claim they're using two scoops of size on their bench press goes from fucking 185 to, you know, almost like 265 for fucking, you know, 12 plus reps in a matter of six weeks. You know, tons of guys on the football team, tons of guys who were just, you know, d ball only cycle gangsters, um, shit like that. You know, it's not like back then you had anyone to really tell you otherwise. It was just like, this is, you know, common shit. You know, people use gear. Like, do you want to use gear? Yes or no? And like, how do you do it? Ask your buddy. You know, at most, look at some of the forums online. That was like the extent of research. So like, even though obviously this story is like the extreme hyper fucking polarity, worst case scenario thing that not gonna happen to anybody else. It's good that it brings information like this into the mainstream via like very, very polarizing topics that then circulate information about safer use for individuals who are, you know, even going to approach like very intelligently designed stuff but are considering doing it at too young of an age or, you know, whatever. It encourages people to do more research, encourages people to not, you know, just learn about shit off Wikipedia or a steroid forum or whatever. Uh, I'm not saying to use YouTube as your reference point either. It's, you know, encouraging a further education process before you embark on this stuff in general. So it's definitely good that this stuff exists and there is, you know, circulating information about the uh, harm reduction aspect. So anyways, hope you guys enjoyed that one. I will indeed get into part two soon. This is uh, the link here. Brain damage from trying to abuse part two. A few more something. I can't read the rest of the URL, but apparently it's about cum bots, violence towards women and racist thoughts on trends. So if you want to see that, let me know in the comments down below. I will probably record it after this, but if not, um, I don't know, maybe I'll wait to see if actually more comments actually care to see it. Comments help the algorithm, they're much appreciated. Like, subscribe, check out my blog, moreplaysmoredates.com, follow me on Instagram, at moreplaysmoredates. Facebook, Snapchat, bitch, fucking bitch, dude. Tw TikTok, Apple, <laughs> Apple Podcasts. If you want to support the channel, you can check out anything I'm associated with in the video description below, my TRT clinic. It's all telemedicine from the come for your own home. I'm get high quality oversight from doctors who actually know how to read labs, how to even prescribe the proper diagnostics, how to interpret them. 
kind of guide you in your hormone replacement endeavors if you were an individual who it is justified for. And again, like even a guy like this, you know, he might be getting on TRT and like perhaps he doesn't even need it. That's like an example of where having a high quality doctor for your oversight would be very useful. And it's like our clinic is not going to be the clinic that just throws this guy on 200 test replacement plus an astrozole and HCG. You'd be getting his labs done, getting elaborate diagnostics, see if there's anything that can be done from a lifestyle intervention aspect, plus a, you know, potential serum deployment, a potential, you know, whatever it is, a, you know, lighting cell fucking, you know, using HCG to stimulate lighting cells or whatever it is, an HMG, recombinant fucking, anything that could stimulate natural production and then potentially get this guy on his way to recovery in a natural aspect to circumvent the, you know, potential, you know, right now you might think like the only solution is TRT, you know, perfect example of somebody who may benefit from having a doctor who knows what the fuck they're talking about. So if you want to get, you know, checked out, and again, it's not even just hormone replacement. If you want just high quality oversight for health in general, longevity, vitality, stuff like that, um, that's where our clinic excels because we get the margins off of the consults, not just the medications. So, you know, the high quality care is our bread and butter. So check that out if you are interested. And uh, if you want to support the channel too, Gorilla Mind, Nootropic Formulas, Gorilla Mode, pre workout Formulas, Design Myself from Scratch. I think the uh, limited edition July 4th flavor might still be on the site in stock. Uh, it was flying off the shelves when I checked last, so it might be gone by now, but that one is heavily discounted for the July 4th sale and it will remain that price until it's sold out. The flavor is never coming back again. The price is very rarely that cheap. It's like 39 bucks retail. If you use my code DC10, it drops down to like 35. And if you buy three or more at once, it drops down to like 32. So it's like 32 bucks for a tub of Gorilla Mode. Like that price is unheard of. We barely ever have sales like that. So um, definitely a um, good time to stock up if you want to, especially because the flavor is never gonna be back again. And it is quite good. It's probably in my top three of uh, flavors I enjoy. So um, and anything else I'm associated with, it is all in the video description below. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.